we have Eva Skodnikova uh, talking about the revolution of per personal data protection. Eva works as a legal advisor in the area of data protection and IT security. She assists leading professionals and companies to prevent risks and address any legal issues connected with GDPR legislation. And she led the consular section of the Czech Embassy. Can you please give her a very warm welcome to the stage? Morning, well news. I apologize for for not having the any relatives here in Vilnius. However, I have a lot of friends here. That's why I just arrived early and I spent wonderful time on Saturday evening uh, just in the downtown of, of the city because I visited the city a couple of times in, in my past career. Uh, anyway, I am here to introduce you GDPR. Uh, have you ever heard about this regulation? You should, because you are EU country here. Please just raise your hands, who is aware? All right, okay. How do you like it? <laughs> I think that you should. Uh, at least uh, you probably heard uh, the story about uh, Cambridge Analytica and Facebook and the recent development, what happened also with the value of uh, shares of, of, uh, of Facebook uh, uh, that uh, just, uh, uh, you know, significantly impacted the business. And that's why I, I say and uh, I, 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 I couldn't wish the better promotion for GDPR just one month prior to, you know, its enforcement. And um, I would really like you uh, to pay attention uh, to, to this regulation and not to bring you know, the attention of the regulatory bodies and regulators to your businesses because uh, as I could hear on other uh, events, I am also presenting and I have a speech on Detany, which is the fantastic uh, organization. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the, the investment into your ICOs are quite high, so I think that you don't have to uh, exactly uh, uh, just collect the money and immediately just transfer them to the uh, regulator's uh, budget. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time here, just 15 minutes, and I usually speak about GDPR for more than two hours. So I would like to just pick up the highlights and just to give you really a very brief overview of what is going on and what will happen once you know, GDPR will just become uh, effective since uh, 25th of May. What is GDPR? Uh, I just assigned these you know, uh, words to, to the proper words. I, I think that uh, they definitely reflect you know, the main purpose why EU regulators and EU uh, uh, authorities just decided to implement this new set of uh, harmonized data. So the main objective is really giving data proper respect, so giving the rights to us as uh, individuals to have a control uh, over our personal data that are processed, that are arch archived, that are the subject of, you know, analytical uh, researches. Uh, back to back to us, and uh, we have to. Uh, we will have a much, you know, uh, strengthened uh, rights to uh, to to keep the control over our personal data. Uh, GDPR is uh, something which doesn't happen overnight. Uh, the uh, EU authorities just started, you know, working and drafting this law since 2012. And for more than four years, uh, uh, the GDPR was uh, adopted in, uh, in April 2016. And the European authorities basically gave two years to each organization uh, to get compliant and to basically just to follow uh, the rules that are not much stricter than the current you know, rules. But the, unfortunately, what happened is, and that you know, each organization just realized that uh, uh, the current legislation and, uh, uh, was not uh, uh, appropriately uh, followed and uh, that's why uh, the main reason why uh, uh, the authorities uh, uh, basically adopted uh, the new set of harmonized uh, rules uh, is uh, also this picture. If you look at this picture, 
you'll see there is a lot of applications, social media, uh, and uh, they did, didn't even exist in 1995, from which we still have, you know, the current, uh, current law. The main difference between, uh, between uh, uh, GDPR and the current uh, uh, regulations, that GDPR is regulation, which means that this is the, uh, the form of the legal act which is going to be immediately, automatically implemented in each EU country. And you don't need to transpose you know, these rules uh, via your local law. And this is a huge difference. So that's why the law is here uh, since April 2016. And uh, it's not you know, sexy reading, especially uh, uh, prior to going bad, bad because uh, it has uh, more than 100 articles plus uh, many recitals and this is quite complicated law. And probably you are not uh, familiar with the structure of the law, so that's why it's uh, very complex and it's very general. Uh, and each EU country should uh, adopt uh, their you know, a new set of rules that will be basically just in line with regulation. So this is not going to be a new law which uh, will transpose the whole set of rules from GDPR into, uh, into each uh, uh, jurisdiction, but uh, uh, just you know, the um, uh, alignment of your local rules have to be exactly in line with the GDPR. So the, uh, the main reason why GDPR is here, because as I said, many of these applications didn't even exist in uh, 95, so that's why it was really you know, needed to adapt the new set of rules that will also follow the technical development and you know, just the transfer of the, of the personal data uh, on, to, the, to the digital world and to the online world. Uh, this picture is quite scary, and this is what I just said at the beginning. Uh, pay attention to the rules, because uh, I think it would be shame just to present your investors the project that will immediately become non-compliant uh, with, uh, uh, with the new regulation, and uh, uh, I think that uh, each company at least should uh, start you know, adapting the, the, the new rules. Obviously, 20 uh, million euros or 10 million euros uh, cannot be you know, imposed on the small, uh, small companies. It always will just depend on many uh, circumstances. So uh, just for you, you have to be really aware of, of these huge penalties. And uh, in the light of the recent development with Facebook and the Cambridge Analytica, I think that you know, regulators will be even more stricter and they will really just pay uh, uh, to pay attention that, uh, and they will just control uh, uh, that the companies are really in, in, in line and they just started adopting you know, the new rules. If you just look at some statistics, uh, you see that uh, uh, not many companies will be fully compliant by May this year. Uh, there are you know, numbers like 60%, 50%. Uh, but the, the, the most important thing is that, you know, journey just starts. It starts uh, from May. It's not the end of the story that, you know, two years, some, you know, companies just did, that they did something uh, to get compliant. But the journey starts, really, because the law, uh, you know, uh, come in forced, and that's why, you know, the regulators will sort of have a uh, right, and they have a... Uh, you know, much uh, stronger control of uh, what, what you are doing. So please just don't bring attention to your, to your ICOs and to your fantastic projects. Uh, GDPR is based on various principles. I cannot obviously go to the, uh, to the details, but uh, the one of the main principles is, that is uh, data minimization, which means that you have to really just uh, process the personal data uh, that... Uh, you really need for your business, you need for your, for your activities. So uh, we have a tendency as, a, as a human beings you know, to collect uh, so much you know, data and sometimes we don't even use them. 
and this is, uh, uh, this is something what GDPR doesn't like. GDPR really just wants us to, uh, to, to process and to work and to collect the data well, that you know, we really need uh, to, uh, uh, for, for your daily activities. Uh, there are some specifics with respect to the blockchain. Uh, I probably don't have to go to the details of what this blockchain means. I just, you know, highlighted the main uh, characteristics, you know, of, of the blockchain because it has a, uh, a quite challenging, you know, impact on GDPR because when the GDPR was drafted, uh, nobody talks about the blockchain and about the technicalities, you know, how the blockchain is uh, basically designed. So, uh, on one hand, I would say that um, uh, controllers and uh, the authorities, regulator, regulators, would love the blockchain because, as a summary, uh, the blockchain is some kind of the electronic database uh, which is secured against the data manipulation. Uh, you have uh, uh, various, you know, uh, kinds of blockchains. I just, you know, pick up some of them, the most uh, uh, and frequently used. And what I always, uh, you know, ask you, just ask uh, these questions. Uh, these questions are very important for you as, a, as, a, as ICOs, also for your uh, investors that they should ask you what, for example, kind of personal data you are processing or uh, whether is a hash is a personal data or is anonymized data. It's really important just to ask uh, also these questions. Very challenging would be who is the controller and who is the processor in the, you know, all uh, uh, blockchain design. Uh, GDPR is about personal data. So the GDPR protects the personal data, either of your employees or your clients. Uh, it uh, primarily doesn't protect your business data. But I always say that as an additional, you know, a side effect, of GDPR is that once you implement the proper technical organization measures, uh, then you will immediately protect also your, your business data, which are, you know, very valuable. If you look at the top 10 Forbes, you know, the most valuable companies, all of them just work with the data, even it's Amazon, Facebook, you know, Google, all of them. So I think that the, the data are just becoming the, you know, the new fuel. It's becoming the, really the value you are having. And uh, because these data relate to us as individuals, uh, we have to have a trust into the companies that are processing the data, especially if they are the processing uh, these kind of you know, sensitive special category data. Because uh, uh, GDPR protects these data, uh, like a genetic or biometric data, uh, uh, more than, than these data, like, uh, you know, address, uh, your, um, your um, uh, phone number, your email. So you have to always ask the questions, what might happen to me as an individual or I mean to the individuals of which you are, you know, processing the data. What's the risk? Uh, what might happen to the people uh, if, if the data will be abused or misused? What might happen? We could see that, you know, on the Facebook issue, what might happen, you know, with the, with the manipulation of, uh, of the data. So uh, just pay attention, really. Uh, in case that you are not, uh, uh, not processing or just collecting these data. But much more important just, is just to, uh, to, to pay attention when you are processing this kind of data, genetic, biometric data. So the genetic data, primarily all the data that are related to, to our health conditions and biometric, uh, you, you probably know what, what's, the, what's the main purpose of the biometric data. A uh, good question is uh, whether blockchains really just process personal data. It really, it really, uh, uh, it really depends, and uh, this is the, the question when you are start designing, you know, the, uh, the, the, your blockchain, your project, just ask these questions. 
I have to just run because two minutes, this is scary, you know, now maybe <laughs> I am just in the middle. However, just to tell you that in case that you would like to get this presentation, just ask me. And obviously I can just have a discussion, you know, separately during the all day when, uh, when I am here. So you see, uh, this, this picture is also very important. You have to, uh, you have to assign you know, to your processing, to processing of the data, the appropriate you know, legal title. Consent would be probably one of the main uh, uh, legal titles you can use in, in, in the blockchain. Uh, processing of the personal data, again, all these activities definitely just you know, come into the scope of, of, of your businesses and uh, 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 the other, you know, very important, uh, uh, important uh, uh, criteria is to, to distinguish whether you are so-called controller of your, of your data or whether you are processors. Because that's a very challenging question, in the, again, in case of the blockchain, who is basically controller and who is a processor? Because it really comes from the definition and from the, from the uh, structure of, of the blockchain. Uh, there are, uh, you know, various responsibilities and obligations coming from, from GDPR. The one of them is uh, that you have to, in case that you will just have a data breach, you have to notify the regulators. There are certain terms and uh, the period within which, you know, you are, you are obliged to notify, uh, notify your regulators. Very important change from the recent and from the current, you know, legislation is that GDPR has a much, you know, broader uh, impact on the companies than current legislation because GDPR will basically apply to all companies that are either have a uh, seat physical presence on the European Union uh, soil or they are offer uh, goods or services to Europeans but don't have to have a you know presence in European Union which is very important because in the blockchain you know global uh, the business, most of your, uh, most of your uh, projects definitely will just, you know, fall uh, under the scope of GDPR. That, that's another, you know, very uh, challenging question for the blockchain. Who, you know, which law basically will be the, uh, the, the, uh, the main law that, you know, basically uh, will just uh, govern your, uh, govern your um, uh, business. Uh, as I said in, you know, at the beginning of my presentation, GDPR just strengthens our rights as individuals. To each right corresponds the obligation on the, on the side of the company. So that's why you will have a lot of responsibilities and you really have to put your you know, paperwork prior to starting any project. It's really important and this is what, you, for example, Johanna just said, that you know, uh, uh, you have to be uh, uh, clear and you have to be open to your investors. So please uh, just make sure that you know all these uh, accountability uh, obligations uh, you, you meet. It's again, it, it, it depends on the, on, the, on the data, on the character of the data you are processing. Because for example, you will definitely have to go through DPIA assessment, which is in blockchain also very important. It depends which blockchain you just uh, chose for your, uh, for your project. So, and I would say the one more very important thing that you will need EU representative, not uh, just in the form like a data protection officer, because sometimes you don't need a data protection officer, but if you don't have a presence, physical presence on EU, soil, you at least as an American company or any, any other company, uh, you need the uh, representative for, uh, for, uh, for your company and to, for, for the, as, a, as a main contact for your clients or also for the regulators. So I am just at the end. Uh, sorry, uh, that was really fast. I'm not used to have a, such a, you know, short presentations. But uh, as I said, there are my contact details. In case you would like to get the presentation and just to get, uh, you know, more details, just let me know. Thank you.